When I was a child, my mom always told me, Angel, when you were born, all the angels came from heaven. Do you know why? Because you're special. On June 16, 2018, I launched my show, Have Faith, Let It Begin. I always wanted to change the world, share my personal testimony, share real life stories and motivational topics to set out to go out and change the world. Join me each and every week, Monday through Friday, because this is a show all about faith. My name is Angel, and welcome to Have Faith, Let It Begin. Have Faith, Let It Begin. Hello, everyone, and good morning. My name is Angel. Today, on April 15th, 2019, this Monday edition, we begin a series entitled my depression. I'd like to begin by just thanking all of you that have reached out to me and have put me in prayer, that have reached out to me and thanked me uh, for being honest, but more importantly, for not hiding um, anything that is going on in my life because I and staying true to form when I stated from the very beginning as I launched this podcast that I would never hide anything from each and every one of you. So... With that being said, let me get let me get started. My depression came back uh, about two months ago, um, and it's very hard to just kind of come right out and say what it's about. All I can explain to you is, and how I, how I can explain it to you for those of you that have never been in a depression, so that you can understand why this happens. Um, there are certain things that have happened in my life um, that have left marks, um, that have left um, really, really deep scars. And some of them ha- I've been able to um, deal with and have learned to you know, let it go. There are other scars that are so deep that at times when I feel like they're gone, something happens or something occurs or an incident uh, or some kind of um, uh, whether it's a chapter in a book whether it's a scene from a movie whether it's a song on radio can trigger um, the depression I want to take you back and explain to you where I'm going with this and just please bear with me because a lot of my family don't even know that I've been in a depression. A lot of my immediate friends um, don't know, but there are a selective few that I've shared this with, including, of course, my therapist. In my entire life, since I began dating, I have always dealt with uh, being cheated on. The hardest thing I think that any person will go through in a relationship is being cheated on. It is extraordinarily, um, it's just very hard. It's difficult. It breaks you down. It breaks your heart and it messes with your mind. And if you're a person that already has insecurities, especially the way I did with my weight, with the way I, you know, the way I appear or I look, um, doesn't add any, um, doesn't help this, the matters work any better, you know, it makes it worse. Dealing with being cheated on over and over and over again has put me in a position to feel as if I am not good enough for um, relationships and certainly I you know my wife um, as strong as she is um, inherits the garbage from my past and um, I don't take it out on her by any means Um, but God knows that you know even when we've had our rough uh, rough patches and our uh, problems um, it, it always seems to surface for me the, oh my gosh, you know, will my wife do that to me? Or, oh my gosh, you know, what if? 
And um, what triggered it for me was we were actually watching uh, a movie or a show and something had happened in the movie that was very, very close um, to my past. And it, it bothered me. It got to me. It hurt me. Um, and it's not, just to be clear, it's not that I miss the person that did that to me. It's the feeling that I felt um, that resurfaced. And dealing with that brought um, anger. It brought, um, it brought me to a position where I wanted to be left alone. And the hardest part is, you know, I'm, I'm bringing a child into this world. I'm raising a child into this world. And it's a daughter. And the first thing I said was, you know, what am I going to do if somebody does this to my daughter? And as a father, you know, I have to come to terms that it may happen to my daughter. And over the last couple of months since Ariel has been born, I've also put on some weight. And... You know, when you're, you know, as a guy, you know, we, we, we gain weight. We, we, we lose weight. We, we, we gain weight and lose weight gain weight. For the girls, you know, I know it's tough. But for somebody who's battled with his weight his entire life and has been picked on, put down, um, and um, bullied by his own family and brothers um, and past relationships have told me that, you know, the reason why they've done... The, They've cheated on me is because they didn't like the way I looked. All that, you know, plays a factor. All that um, re- resurfaces real quick. And um, recently, you know, I, I would go get ready for work and I find that certain shirts weren't fitting. And again, you know, dealing with watching that episode or that show and dealing with my past of being cheated on... Um, And then not being able to wear certain pairs of pants or a shirt because I had gained weight, it really took its toll on me. And one of the things that I regret is that, you know, I started to feel a little, I started to feel like I was distancing myself um, from, you know, from people. Um, And, you know, that on top of the fact that currently in my job, we have been dealing with a lot of gossip, a lot of negativity. A lot of issues where people are accusing other people of doing things that are not even true. And then, of course, when they are when they finally own up to it and they say that they lied just because they wanted to get back at somebody, it didn't make things any easier. So now my safe place, which was my, my job, was not a safe place. And um, everywhere I turned, everywhere I looked, is that it was as if I didn't have anywhere I could go to let out my frustrations thank God for this show thank God for all of you thank God for for God himself and for prayer thank God for my wife and for my daughter and then of course dealing with in-laws and dealing with misconception um, misinformation um, lack of communication and um and, and for myself, dealing with the, with my past of having to cut ties with a lot of friends and not having the friends that I used to, once again, um, the only thing I had uh, to turn to at that point are three friends that are um, very close to my heart, two out of state and one that's currently in state but doesn't get along with my wife. Uh, my wife doesn't get along with him, I should say. Um, it just kept piling on. And I really didn't know what I had to do to overcome um, this anger that was building up inside. On top of all of that, um, things were happening even at my own church. And it just felt as if little things kept popping up and little things kept um, adding fuel to the fire. And for those of you that know who I am, that's not me. I am not a person that is unhappy. I'm a person that is truly, truly uh, feel like that the world is a blessing and I, I find that my life is a blessing 
and I'm never upset or sad. But when I get to that point, I get even more upset because I've actually gotten to that point. It's, it's, it's not a good feeling. So that's where it started. And along the way, I would have small arguments with my wife. My wife and I were not on the same page for a couple of weeks. Um, I started to get upset with, you know, my in-laws. Uh, it's very easy to get, in, you know, my in-laws and I don't really see eye to eye. Um, we have never really seen eye to eye since 2010. Um, and, uh, and it's really sad, but that's, that's just the way things have gone. Um, and on top of all that, you know, dealing with, uh, family, um, family storms that I, that is happening within my family and dealing with, uh, brothers and, uh, of mine and, 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 and other, um, uh, people in my family that are struggling with their own marriages or struggling with their own fate, um, didn't make things any easier. Um, and then of course, you know, struggling with the whole situation that happened to me with my kidney stone and being out of, in and out of the hospital, it just piled up and it, and, and I'll be honest with you. I, I don't want anybody to think that when I came on the air, I was faking my joy this is the one thing about this show that was an outlet for me. This show allowed me to feel comfortable as I got into the vehicle, as I turned on the microphone, as I announced, have faith, let it begin. It was a reminder to me. It was a... I want to find the right word to say it, but it was, it was as if I found a, a, a life force, an energy source that provided me fuel in a positive way. And I know I kind of got a little bit kind of broad. I, I, you know, it was kind of maybe a little vague on the on what's happening. But that that's where it all began. That's where my depression started to evolve. And I'm already now, you know, well into this episode... And I'm not doing this for viewership. I just want to keep things at a certain um, amount of time. We're closing in at 11 minutes and 55 seconds. And of course, that's not including the intro. Um, I'm going to stop it right now. And we will continue this because it is a series. I knew it was going to be a series. I told you it was going to be a series. But I want to go as much as I can. I don't want to overdo it and then get, get caught up in the emotions. But... I wanted to get, and I get you all started with an idea of where this is going to go. And um, by by no means am I am I um, depressed to the point or upset that I would do anything to myself. I want to make sure that's clear. Not never in my wildest dreams would I ever get to that point. And for the record, I'm over um, being you know that down. I, I've 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 since gotten better. Just talking about it makes me feel a little sad, but it doesn't bring me sad to the point where I'm upset or it's not triggering a depression. Um, I, I, you will learn as you know, later on in the next episodes, um, how this all was, you know, prevented and now it was fixed. But for now, this is the journey we're going to be doing this week. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that I can keep it to three, to three episodes, but if I need the extra two days, I will take it. I take this very seriously because there's a lot of people out there that are dealing with depression and I hear about it all the time. And, um, and, and now that to share with you that I'm doing it and I'm dealing with it, I, I think it's only right to, to give it as no, enough time as I can to make sure that I'm heard and that you hear my story. So for that, I'm going to end today's episode and ask you to return with me tomorrow, um, on Tuesday, you know, April 16th, uh, 2019. And We'll continue on with part two of my depression. For now, let's leave, let's, let's leave us on a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving me the courage to announce to my viewers, announce to my family that yes, I have been battling a depression and that I am, you know, since recuperating from it and I am doing my very best to allow God in to my life uh, even more than he already is. Because I believe that with you and through you, God, everything is possible. And I know that you're guiding me 
in the right direction. And I know that things happen for a reason. And I know that you're you're teaching me to teach others that it's okay to be honest about your feelings. It's okay to be honest about things that have happened to us. And most importantly, that we all can overcome anything if we allow you in our lives. So we pray for our friends and families, our brothers and sisters and their wives, our nieces and nephew. We pray for our our families, our military personnel, foreign and domestic. We pray for our first responders. And we just ask you, Lord, now more than ever to continue to watch over us in your precious name. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have faith. Let it begin. Thank you for listening to another episode of Have Faith, Let It Begin. That's right, Ariel. We're done with another show. And it's always great to have this show with you, my love. You know, we're going to encourage each and every person to listen to our show every single weekday. That's right. You and I are going to help change the world. Do you think that you can do that for me? Huh? Yeah, you know you can. She does. We want to let you know. and it, Yes, we encourage you to listen to our show each and every weekday. And it's going to be live at 730. Make sure you're subscribed to our show. Make sure you get ready. Fasten those seatbelts because Ariel and I and my family are going to bring you a new topic, a new story each and every day, right? Isn't that right, Ariel? Yeah. And we impress. <laughs> She's smiling at me. Guys, enjoy your day. <laughs>